Whenever your JavaScript doesn't work, you probably resort to scattering console.logs around your code and checking the console, but this can be a messy and frustrating way to debug your JavaScript. In this video, I'm going to teach you a better way. So I have this web app here. It's actually the main project from my Learn React and Redux from beginner to paid professional course. So it's a React app, but that's completely irrelevant. What I'm going to show you will work for any front-end JavaScript, whether you're using a framework or not. Anyway, this app is broken. If we do a search, the thumbnails all come back broken. So what do we do? So most people will do this. They'll go to the part of the code where we've got the function that processes the search results and do a console.log on the results. Then go back to the browser and reload it. Then you want to bring up the console and we want to check the results that we've outputted. And yeah, they all look fine to us. So the next step is usually to add another console.log somewhere else. Now, this way of debugging does work, but it is a bit cumbersome, constantly adding and removing console.logs all over the place. I'm going to show you a slightly nicer way. In the code, we simply remove the console.log, and in its place, we put the word debugger. Now, let's go back to the browser and see what that does. So we reload in the browser, and you're going to need to make sure the developer tools are open or this won't work at all. We perform our search again. Now, when the code hits the debugger statement, the browser stops. The JavaScript execution is paused at this point. We call this a breakpoint. We can now do some really cool things. We can inspect the current state of the code. We can see exactly where we are in the code. We can mouse over variables and it shows their current values. If you go down here, we can see a call stack showing all of the functions that were called to get to this point. Over here, we can see all of the variable scopes we've got available at the current point and see all of the variables in each scope and even their current values. We can even add new breakpoints by clicking like this and a blue arrow comes up. Then we press the blue arrow down here, and this moves on to the next breakpoint or just to the end of the code if there isn't one. And you can just remove the breakpoint by clicking it again. You can press this down arrow here to skip into functions, or this right facing arrow here to step through the code one line at a time. So this goes into another function call. And somewhere down here, we've got the value we want. We thought it was a string, and this is why we've got a problem, but it's actually an object, and we want the URL property, which is a string. And the debugger gives us the exact line of code we need to go and fix it. So we go back to our code, we know the exact line number where we've got the problem, because we saw it in the debugger, and now we just fix it by adding .url. And of course we go down and we remove the debugger statement. So in the browser again we reload, perform another search, and now we get all our thumbnails. Everything works as expected. So there you have it. Breakpoints are a more professional, faster and hassle-free way to debug your JavaScript code.